Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today received the Council of Representative Speaker, Fazir bin Abdullah Zainal, and Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Asali at His Royal Highness's Majlis. His Royal Highness began by noting that citizens remain at the heart of the all development efforts led by His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa and underlined that a strong, coherent link between the legislative and executive authorities is key to creating further opportunities. The Crown Prince reviewed the measures taken in light of the spread of the coronavirus outside of mainland China and issued directives intensifying epidemiological monitoring to prevent the entry of the virus into the Kingdom, particularly at Bahrain International Airport. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince went on to note that the Cabinet's decision to direct the government to absorb the cost of VAT incurred on water and electricity is to unify the data subsidy disbursements is testament to the government's commitment to ensuring public service delivery excellence. His Royal Highness highlighted the directives issued regarding the allocation of 5,000 new housing units as well as directives issued to the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning regarding service development projects in cooperation with the Council of Representatives. Finally, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince reaffirmed that the Bahraini Saudi Joint Business Council is a valuable asset that is creating favourable market dynamics for sustainable growth by further strengthening the economic integration between the two kingdoms. For their part, the Council of Representatives Speaker and the Shura Council Chairman expressed their gratitude to His Royal Highness for supporting enhanced cooperation between the executive and legislative branches. The meeting was also attended by Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. Deputy Prime Minister Jawad bin Salam Al Rayad, Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Samir Abdullah Nas, and a number of senior officials. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, a Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Gidebia Palace. Following the session, the Cabinet Secretary General, Dr Yas bin Isa Al Nasser, gave the following statement. The cabinet hailed the meeting of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa with the King of Morocco, His Majesty King Mohammed VI, during His Majesty the King's brotherly visit to Morocco, affirming the depth of brotherly ties between Bahrain and Morocco and this meeting's role in strengthening relations. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince then directed government authorities to continue raising the efficiency of government services and work on increasing competitiveness, creativity and innovation to develop government performance and improve the quality of government services effectively and efficiently. 
His Royal Highness expressed thanks to government services centres who received the gold classification in 2019 as part of the Takim programme, which are the Information and E-Government Authority, the Electricity and Water Affairs, Tamkeen, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, and the Social Insurance Organisation. His Royal Highness also expressed thanks to government services centres who received the silver classification, which are the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Labour and Social Development, the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, and the Ministry of Communications and Telecommunications. During the Cabinet's review of the precautionary measures taken by the Ministry of Health to prevent the arrival of the coronavirus in the country, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince directed to speed up the provision of early detection devices and the necessary equipment to deal with any potential development. He also directed to connect Ministry of Health's public laboratories with major centres for disease control and prevention and with international organisations. The Cabinet also reviewed the precautionary and preventative measures taken in the Kingdom's outlets to prevent corona from arriving in the country. The Cabinet decided that the Government levy VAT on electricity and water services so that the current electricity tariffs include the VAT amount and that the implementation begins in February 2020. It also approved a ministerial draft law on adding a new Article 6 bis to Decision 1 of 2016 regarding the electricity and water consumption tariff. The Cabinet approved the disbursement of five programmes simultaneously submitted by the Ministry of Labour and Social Development and the Ministry of Housing. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince instructed the Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training, led by Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, to study the proposal submitted by the Representatives Council on finding solutions for Bahraini students with university degrees from China that have not been equated. The Cabinet approved a resolution that sets registration and renewal fees in Brooker's schedule. The Cabinet approved a draft agreement on air services between the governments of Bahrain and Italy that is aimed at strengthening cooperation between the two countries in the field of air transportation and facilitating the aviation of air services between them. The Cabinet approved a draft law ratifying an air services agreement between Bahrain and the Maldives signed between the two sides on September 25, 2019. The Cabinet reviewed the educational projects and tasks implemented by the Ministry of Education and the programmes and projects it will implement to achieve the general goals and priorities of the Government Plan 2019-2020. to The Cabinet also approved Bahrain's hosting of the Gulf and Regional Sports Conference from the 25th to the 27th of February 2020. The Cabinet approved a draft resolution amending a number of municipality fees and cancelling the additional fees on waste disposal services after four o'clock. The Cabinet followed up on the commitment of industrial companies in Saman Industrial City on limiting environmental laws and regulations. <coughs> 
deputized by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King's personal representative, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the closing ceremony of the fourth King Abdulaziz Camel Festival, which was held in Riyadh. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, patronized the festival, which was attended by crown princes, royalties, and heads of delegations of countries participating in the event, in addition to invitees. Bahrain's ambassador to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdul Al Khalifa, and other officials and the media delegation were also present. The Saudi monarch received His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamid, who conveyed greetings from His Majesty the King, wishing the custodian of the two holy mosques abundant health and happiness and the brotherly Saudi people further progress and prosperity. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah held long standing fraternal relations binding Bahrain and Saudi Arabia stressing His Majesty the King's keenness and Bahrain's participation in the Heritage Festival. He also lauded the success of the Camel Festival, which reflects deep-rooted Arab authenticity and revives a deep-rooted Arab heritage and festival. His Highness attended the festival during which the Saudi royal anthem was played and verses from the Holy Quran were recited. The Saudi monarch handed over the prizes to the top winners of the Camel Race. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah praised the crucial role of Saudi Arabia and dedicated efforts to hold the annual festival, which reflects Saudi Arabia's deep-rooted heritage in the history of the Arabian Peninsula.
BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received the Representative's Council Speaker, Farsiya bin Abdullah Zainal. Lieutenant General Diab bin Saga Al Nuemi, Chief of Staff, and Defence Affairs Ministry's Under Secretary Major General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa were also present. The Commander in Chief discussed aspects of cooperation and coordination between the BDF and Representatives Council. He praised the good efforts exerted by the Parliament members to serve citizens and residents. The Council of Representatives Speaker, Farsiya bin Abdullah Zainal, the discussions issued by the Cabinet on the government's levying of VAT on electricity and water services so that the current electricity tariffs include the VAT amount and the endorsement of five programmes simultaneously to increase the efficiency and quality of government services. She noted the keenness of the legislative authority to support the development of all vital projects and development initiatives, take into consideration the circumstances as well as provide the best services for the country and its citizens. Zinel expressed gratitude and appreciation for the projects implemented in cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities to achieve the goals of Comprehensive Development March, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. She also noted the government's efforts in preventing the spread of the coronavirus. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Asale, praised the keenness of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to communicate and coordinate with the Legislative Authority and the Government. Asali affirmed the Council's keenness to enhance the cooperation with the Government in order to achieve further progress and prosperity for the Kingdom and its people. He praised His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's visions to maintain national gain and his aspirations to achieve further accomplishments on all levels. The Chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, participated in the Al Asar Al Sharif International Conference in Cairo under the patronage of the Egyptian President Abdul Fattah Al Sisi with the participation of international delegations. Sheikh Abdul Rahman delivered a speech in which he affirmed that Islam is a religion of forgiveness and coexistence among all. He added that Bahrain follows a path of tolerance and moderation as well as accepting different kinds of religions and cultures. He praised the efforts of Al-Asha Al-Sharif and his historical role in serving all kinds of religions. The conference will include discussions on a number of topics on its agenda. The Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Environment, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, inaugurated the Mahouz and Adliya multi-purpose st stadiums in the presence of the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Amawayed, which comes following the initiative of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to establish 100 courts. His Highness Sheikh Faisal praised His Highness Sheikh Nas's initiative, which aims to provide a sports environment for the youth and facilitates the need to hold sporting activities and nurture youth skills. His Highness praised the efforts of the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs in integrating with ministries and the private sector bodies to implement this initiative. The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs said that this initiative aims to attract the youth and discover their talents. He praised the keenness of His Highness Sheikh Faisal to implement the initiative of His Highness Sheikh Nasser in order to enhance the sports movement in the Kingdom. The initiative is one that was initiated by His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, uh, the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports. The idea behind the parks is to get people to um, participate in sports uh, more and more. So number one, we need to get them um, out into the parks, out into the courts. Uh, number two, we need to make sure that we scout talent. And then number three, we're, we're supposed to develop talent and, and make sure that we shed light on this, these talents so that we can take them to the professionalization level. Um, so this is one of a of hundred courts that, that are under development. Um, we're trying to position them very strategically within neighborhoods, as you can see. Um, this is very similar to street courts that we are also developing. It's an opportunity for young people to come and participate and exercise uh, on this playground. It's a big addition for the capital government. Being a court in the neighborhood is really good. It makes a big difference because most of the kids need to play and it's really good. 
For the ninth year, Capital Governor Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa honours 16 government and private agencies who won it in a Bahrain's National Day Decorations competition. The competition included five categories, uh, government ministries, government institutions, hotels and commercial complexes, educational agencies, youth centres, banks and private companies. Moreover, the Governor honoured five winners of a photography competition for the joyous manifestations of National Day via Instagram. In the category of government ministries, the Ministry of Finance and National Economy won first place. The second place went to Ministry of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning and the third place to the Electricity and Water Authority. As far as the category of government bodies, Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities ranked first. Second place went to Public Security Officers Club and third place to the Central Bank of Bahrain. As for the category of hotels and malls, the first place went to the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, the second place the Avenues Bahrain and the third place a Swiss Bell Hotel Al Sif. While the ranking of the category of educational entities and youth centres came in the first place, the University of Applied Sciences, the second place Al Naim Youth Centre, and the third place Abu Bakr Sadiq Preparatory School for Boys. The category of banks and private companies, the first place was achieved by Al Ali United Bank, the second position STC Company, the third place Standard Chartered Bank, and fourth place Shifa Al Jazeera Hospital. The capital governor said that the aim of the two competitions is to highlight the civilised and urban aspect of the capital during the national holidays within the framework of artistic images, showing Manama and highlighting the spirit of partnership and cooperation. Our ninth anniversary for uh, participating in the decoration for the National Day whether it is uh, whether it's uh, government buildings or uh, banks and uh, hotels and uh, and we are very successful this year a lot of participants and we have a lot of uh, beautiful buildings and a lot of winners especially the instagram with the participation from families and residents in bahrain and we have a lot of winners the selection depends on, on many uh, criteria which are taken uh, in consideration while making the selection. Uh, mainly it is the, uh, the lighting, the colors, the location, and uh, usually there is a theme which most of them they follow because they know what National Day resembles. We have been winning this for the last five years and uh, it's really nice to engage our students and celebrate National Day and Accession Days and take part in these competitions and we would like to thank the Capital Governor and His Excellency the Governor for this excellent initiative uh, bringing the beauty and creativity of, of Bahraini into a nice, nice competition and engaging our students and staff in, in the competition was absolutely amazing. Every year we try to win the award, every year we try to better what we do and it's thanks to the vision of the ownership. We meet, we have meetings from September, we decide the scheme and, and every year we say we're going to do better than last year. So to win today, it's an honor for us because we do that to, you know, to enlighten the Ritz Canton and to do a great decoration for Bahrain. The Indian Embassy in Bahrain celebrated last night the 71st Republic Day of India in the presence of ambassadors, officials, dignitaries and Bahraini friends, along with the Indian community in Bahrain. More in this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. In a wonderful celebration of historical ties and the close partnership between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of India, the Indian Embassy held a ceremony gathering the Indian community, along with the diplomatic corps, officials and Bahraini friends to celebrate the 71st Republic Day of India. Indian community here is a part of social fabric in Bahrain and the two communities have prospered together, working together, living together, and that's what is the strength of our relationship. It is always an honor and privilege to celebrate Indian festivals, Indian National Day with the friendly people of Bahrain. And, and the, the support we get in the Kingdom of Bahrain from leadership, from people, from the business community is immense.
Glimpses of the state visit of the Indian Prime Minister to the Kingdom of Bahrain were displayed, in addition to his speech, reiterating the unique ties between the two friendly countries on all levels. Great relations between the uh, uh, Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of India that lasted uh, for a history uh, of uh, achievement and cooperation at all levels, political, economic and trade. And we have managed successfully to increase the exchange rate between the two countries to a very potential rate and we also we are looking to increase that one. India, a very happy Republic Day and uh, it is indeed a wonderful uh, time to, uh, to show the world how we share and we celebrate each other's happy occasions. We're always together. It indeed uh, strengthens our bonds. Um, the diplomatic ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and India go back a very long way. On the special occasion, the Indian community expressed their love to Bahrain and its people and highlighted the support they receive and the freedom they enjoy. It's a very joyous moment for all of us. And living in Bahrain, if you ask me, for me this is the first home, not the second home. I always feel that Bahrain is my first home. I have lived 20 years here and uh, everything is so nice here comparing to our own homeland and my family, my children, all of them like Bahrain as such. Bahrain is, uh, if you ask me, most of the Indians who live here, they will say the same thing because the way Bahrain is treated us, the way we are with them, it's kind of camaraderie and the brotherhood we have always been, you know, cherishing for generations. I would like to say that, you know, I don't feel that I am away from my country. So for all Indians, the expatriates living here, it is home away from home. That is the uh, the care we are getting from the rulers, the vice rulers of Bahrain, as well as the people of Bahrain, they are treating us like their own brothers and sisters. And in my past uh, 25 years of experience here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The relationship between Bahrain and India is very special. I've been here for over 20 years and I feel like I'm always at home. So celebrating Republic Day in Bahrain, it's like celebrating at home away from home. So such events reflect the social fabric of Bahrain since all times and the brotherhood between not only governments but also peoples. On the occasion of the 71st Republic Day of India, today we celebrate a unique friendship, a unique relationship between two brotherly countries, Bahrain and India. Hiba Abdul Ghaffar, Bahrain International.